welcome to a brand new episode of Coming Distractions brought to you by the Nerdpocalypse Podcast. I'm your host, Jay, uh, solo this week. So I decided to do a review of the entire new Netflix Marvel Punisher series. So I sat down, watched all 13 episodes in a rush, I have to say, uh, just because, one, I wanted to get it out uh, early, but also because I was really enjoying it. Um, to say the least, this is the best Marvel Netflix show in my opinion, hands down. It's not even close. I love the first season of Daredevil. Uh, I thought the second season of Daredevil was fine. Not amazing, but fine. Um, I love Luke Cage. I thought Jessica Jones was very good, and I was not a fan of Iron Fist whatsoever. And Defenders was a middling sort of product. Um, but one of the things that came out of Daredevil season two, as everyone knows, was John Barenthal's portrayal of Frank Castle, a.k.a. The Punisher. Um, and this series focuses solely on his story after the events of season two of Daredevil. Um, the series obviously stars John Barenthal, Eben Moss Backrett, um, Amber Rose Reva, Deborah Ann Wool, and uh, a number of other folks who all do excellent jobs. Now, the premise of the series is... It picks up a number of months after um, season two of Daredevil, where people believe that the Punisher, a.k.a. Frank Castle, are, is dead. And um, he's sort of operating, uh, taking out uh, some people, general bad guys. Um, and he kind of stumbles into this whole backstory of his about some work, some sort of... Um, spec ops work he was doing in Kandahar in Afghanistan. And we slowly watch Frank Castle as he kind of comes out of going by uh, this guy named Peter back into the role of the Punisher. One of the, one of the big things is with the Netflix series are, at least in my opinion, is that sometimes they're a little too long. 13 episodes seems a little too long and it feels like maybe 10 episodes would probably be better to kind of get in and get out. This is one of the few times that I felt, I felt like 13 episodes was really great. Um, it worked. The, the series was uh, well handled and the stories made sense and it didn't feel dragged out. Um, the showrunner Steve Lightfoot did an excellent job. He was working on Hannibal previously, if you've ever seen that. So the violence is there. Um, the brutality of a Frank Castle Punisher book is absolutely in this series. No, Frank Castle doesn't kill a million people and he's not portrayed like he is in previous iterations where he's just a mindless killing machine. He's given real heart. You give reasons behind why he does what he does, but you also still realize that because he is a guy with humanity, he still is scary as hell just because he will kill people if he feels the need to, which he does often. Um, the series has a lot to say, which I thought was pretty interesting. A lot of people had, I saw a number of articles, people complaining about, well, it doesn't say enough about gun violence or something like that. But to me, how is the Punisher going to talk about gun violence in any sort of relatively positive spin? He's a crazy, you know, PT, PTSD suffering sociopath. And he uses guns to murder people almost indiscriminately. So I don't understand that argument against it. What I did find is that the series was more of a love letter to forgotten troops coming home from war, which I'm not sure how you don't see that like in watching it. But maybe, you know, people's narratives in their head based on, aren't based on what they actually saw, which I thought is kind of troubling for the the cr critiques of this series. But if you are a vet or you're sympathetic to the 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 sort of the story of veterans being forgotten after they come home from war, which I think a lot of people should be and are, um, this series does that. Surprisingly, a series about a sociopath who murders people actually had a lot more to say, which is great because, again, in previous iterations, the Punisher hasn't been shown as anything but a, just a monster with a gun. Um, the, you know, the setup for the villains throughout this, uh, I forgot to mention Ben Barn. Ben Barnes, who plays um, who plays uh, a large role in this, is very well done. You finally get to see some of these characters that we've seen in previous iterations fleshed out a little bit more because it's a series, obviously. Uh, Micro, played by um, Evan Moss, 
is his relationship with Frank Castle is so good because they don't just become fast friends as we've seen in again like in Punisher Warzone where it was just like oh he's established he's his tech guy and then that's it they actually have a real contention and when they do reach their sort of familiar comic book relationship it makes sense they had to work to get there um if I had any complaints it would probably be that I I I'm surprised more that the show was a drama with action beats to it instead of an action series with drama beats to it. You know, if th- if that makes sense. Um, and I don't even know if I would even consider that really a criticism. It's it's just that it was a surprising way that they they did the show. Um, uh, the other the other performances I thought were really good. Amber Rose Reva as a Homeland Security agent. Sort of, she figures out that Frank Castle is still alive, and she's she has her own thing, and and her story is very much focused on figuring out Frank Castle's connection to something that happened in Afghanistan, which is the large overarching story. There's there's a B story, which I don't want to give away because I don't want to give away spoilers. That has a lot to say about what happens when some of these guys are ignored and sort of these tragic conclusions, logical conclusions to what happens to these guys when they, when they feel like they're being ignored um, by the government and by gen- like general society after coming back from war, which I thought was really powerful. Um, again, the violence is there. The ending between the Punisher and uh, the main villain is as brutal as you want it to be, John Barenthal is an absolute goddamn lunatic, and it is glorious to watch. He holds nothing back. He is he is a terrifying character when he gets going, and he gets going relatively quickly in this series. Um, not to spoil anything, but a lot of people die before the opening credits of the very first episode. So that's where it starts. It and it doesn't really slow down. Again, um, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot to say about how the CIA and the the FBI and Homeland Security, all how they operate in this you know this sort of militaristic uh, viewpoint, like here and abroad. The sh- the show is absolutely exceptional. Coming off of Defenders, which again I thought was just okay and just kind of barely tripped and fell its way across the finish line. And then before that, Iron Fist, which I thought was a complete failure. Uh, This is a nice, refreshing uh, turn back to like that early first season of Daredevil where you just really got to focus in on the characters and really see that world develop. I look look forward to more of Steve Lightfoot's view of The Punisher. Absolutely want to see it. John Barenthal was an absolute badass. He was perfect, perfect casting. Um, it felt like a Garth Ennis book. It it had everything that I wanted in it. Look, if you haven't watched The Punisher on Netflix, check it out. Total, total surprise in how deep and how real that show got. But it also has very good comic book moments for you. Um, we're going to talk more about it on the Nerdpocalypse podcast um, next week. We'll do our kill count. We had our suggestions on what we thought the kill count was going to be. It's interesting. It's um, interesting what the number ended up being. And we'll talk about that, but the show is an absolute um, revelation. I'm so happy that they actually finally got after all these years, uh, they finally got the Punisher right after three not so great movies. um, They finally did them right. And John Barenthal is at this point, he is the Punisher. So check out the Punisher on Netflix is streaming right now, all 13 episodes and, and also check out coming distractions pod.com and we will see you guys next time. Thanks. (laughs) 